Ah, hello, come in. Nice you. you too. Have a seat. So you're Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah. Becky? Becca. Becca. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, have you had any Alexander lessons before? No. No. Good. Have you heard about it from anyone? From Daniel? Um, I studied at a conservatory and they did it there for a conservatoire and they did it for musicians. Fine. All right. Uh, what's going to happen today is I'm going to give you a, a traditional Alexander lesson and the important thing to remember is you can't make any mistakes. Uh, I'm here to demonstrate what a, a lesson is and you're here to support that, that process. So for the next 45 minutes or so, um, I'm the one that's really on, in the hot seat and you are just here to help me express the Alexander technique and demonstrate how it, how it works and what we do. Have you got any aches, pains, anything that, that hurts? Yes. Um, Tell me. It's all nothing crazy. I just yeah. started working out for the first time this year, this week. And yes. Everything hurts a little bit. But it's not too like new muscles that haven't yeah, been working yeah, for a while. So yeah. my legs a little bit. Um, yes. I'm a bit tight here. Yeah, just As a result of the, the workout. Out. And before you were working out, any habitual patterns, aches, pains, neck, shoulders, back? I'm, my back's usually quite tense. I, yeah. have, I work yes. a lot on my computer, yes. so um, that can cause a bit of tension there. Yes. But nothing sort of chronic. Fine. So at the end of a, a hard day in front of a computer, you might notice stiffness in, in the neck, yeah, in the shoulders, in the, in the lower back. Fine. And right now, anything that you can experience? No. Good. So we're going to start, and it'll be a mixture of movement, sitting, standing, and maybe a bit of walking, and then we'll do a little bit of, of table work as well. Have you got any questions to ask me before we jump into the deep end? No. Good. First of all, thanks for coming. So we'll, we'll start with you standing up, and you can look out of the window, um, come a bit, a bit closer to this stool, and um, what we'll do is you have a look out of the window and stand in front of the chair because you'll be sitting uh, down and that's fine. And if you've got any questions while we're working, any discomfort, any, uh, any questions at all about the technique and what I'm doing, please ask. There's no wrong time to ask, okay? Usually the first thing I do is I I do simple movements like moving, moving your head. And I might move an arm. And if I want you to do a movement yourself, rather than me moving you, I'll ask you. Okay. For now, making life a bit easier, have your feet a bit wider apart. Fine. So I'm moving your head, and as far as possible, you're letting me do the moving, and you're not initiating the movement for me. And there's nothing you need to do in terms of going inside and working anything out or feeling something. You don't need to do anything at all. And when I ask you to do something, then that's the only time you'll need to do anything in particular. So right now, I want you to just go onto the tip of your toes. And then I want you to come down to the heels and stop. That's it. I want you to go onto your toes. And I want you to come down to the heels. And now have your head there. I want you to go onto the toes. And I want you to come down to the heels. Yeah. Now I want you to soften a little bit behind the knees. That's it. That'll do. Perfect. And now all I want from you is to take your hips back as you go towards the chair. When you get there, you can stop all the way to the stool. And when you get to the stool, wait there for a while. I'll move you backwards. I'll move you forwards, I'll move you backwards, I'll move you forwards. So you can see at the moment I'm the mover and you're allowing me moving you. You're allowing your body to go wherever it's taken with the hands unless I ask you to do a movement. And at the moment all I'm asking is for you to go along with your allowing yourself to be moved by my hands wherever they take you. 
and I'm going to take you a little bit further forwards and wait there. Fine. Now I want you to do something a bit more demanding. I want you to stand up with your heels now. That's it. And now I want you to bend the knees until you hit the chair. When you get to the chair, leave the feet just where they are. And again, stand up with your heels and then bend the knees. And then stop there for a while and wait. And without changing very much, gently stand up with the heels and gently bend the knees again. Hold it there. I'll move you back. And I'll move you forwards. So that's me backing, going back to me moving you in contrast to when I asked you to do a movement, like sitting and standing. So I'm moving you right now. Stop right there. And nothing else happens, you can come up with your heels. Stop there, and then bend the knees. And stop there, and wait, and stand up with your heels. Yes, stop there, bend the knees. All the way, and stop there. And then stand up with the heels, and then bend your knees. Mm -hmm. And hold it there, and stand up with the heels. And then bend your knees. I'm going to move you forwards and stop. I'm going to move you backwards. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And anything that feels strange or different or in a way, any way confusing, let me know. I'm going to move your arm. Do you need to spend a lot of time on an average day at a computer? Yeah. I also broke my right shoulder, so my right shoulder's a little bit... Or my whole right side can be a bit more tense. Right, yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, seven, eight years. Yeah. It's a while, but I noticed it on the stretch. Did it heal okay? Or yeah. is it, yeah. It just kind of cracked where all the tendons were attached, but it didn't have to be bolted or anything. Right. And I'm going to move you again. This time I'm going to move you over to the side. And I'm going to move you over to the front. So now as I'm moving you backwards and forwards, tell me what you think is happening in the neck region as you're moving backwards and forwards. Yeah, it's not changing, is it? You're managing to keep it in the same condition. But it's not held as in fixed, it's just not disturbing. Yeah. I'll take you further forwards. So the neck's very interesting. When the neck gets disturbed, it's a sign that your whole being is being a bit disturbed. Yeah. But when your neck is not getting jammed up, it's a sign that you're managing things pretty well. Mm -hmm. Another way of saying that you're managing stress, for instance. Say your neck gets very, very tight and your shoulders get involved in whatever you're doing, computing, sitting, standing, thinking, whatever you're up to, household things, and you're getting all jammed up here, that would be a sign that you're not doing the best you could. So when the neck is not getting involved and it's staying in a condition of ease, that's a sign that you're looking after yourself to a higher level. Does that make sense? Yeah. My job is to help you look after yourself to a higher level than normal and that has to carry through to everyday life. When you sorry, say um, you're not doing your best, as in, you mean you're, you don't think you're doing your best, so as a result your body's doing this? Yes. Or you're not being good enough to your body? You're not being as kind as you could be to your body, mm -hmm. that's exactly it. So when you go around like this all day and you end up with, as you say, neck and shoulder pain at the end of being on a computer for a while and probably quite a concentrated and stressy condition, that's not as kind as if you end up after a few hours on a computer and you're 
still light as a feather with no sensation of aches and pains at all, mm -hmm. that would be better. Yeah. So the neck is a barometer of whether you're nice to yourself or not, whether you're kind to yourself. The neck that gets all jammed up and the whole spine getting compressed would be a sign that you're not as kind to yourself as you could be. And one way of describing the Alexander Technique is a way to learn how to be kinder to yourself in everyday living. Yeah? I'll take you further forwards. So if that's the case, learning how to be kinder to yourself, what do you see the teaching all about? How do you see the Alexander Technique working? What would I be teaching you if I'm teaching you to be kind to yourself? What would it mean for your neck and back? take time to make it feel better? Yes, yeah, so it would, it, it would initially, like now, heels, stand up, you're doing very simple everyday movements and you're not snatching. You're taking time, you're not rushing ahead of yourself, stand up with the heels, and you can see that from sitting to standing, you're not being unkind to your neck and spine. You can feel that, can't you? Yeah. Or your shoulders, or the jaw, or the forehead, or the eyes. You know, if you get stressed out or upset about something, the whole body goes into a bit of a pickle. And the Alexander process is all about not being overly disturbed for too much of a day. Or when you do get upset, or in a hurry, or worried, or anxious, or depressed, you recover quicker and come back to this. So coming back to this condition, which is easy, is something that you learn in the Alexander process. And right now, how do you learn it? Not by me telling you nice things about how to be kind to yourself. You can read that in a book. My job is to give you the experience of a different way of being so that you understand it on, a, on an embodied level, on a real level, not just an intellectual idea. So I take you forwards. That's it. Or I might take you over there. And then as you're in this lovely condition of ease, which you clearly are, you stand up with your heels, and you got out of a chair then, you had an experience. What was it like to get out of a chair in that condition? Uh, different than it was before, but not hard. That's right, not hard heels. What else is a description to describe these movements right now? Yeah. Fluid, yeah. So you have an experience of fluid, which is a very, very classic Alexander experience. Fluid as opposed to what would be the normal, do you think? If you f that you're fluid now compared to what you would normally feel, how would you describe what the everyday for most of us is if it isn't fluid? Uh, tense. Tense, um, yeah. So j uh, jarring. Jarring, jerky, tense, and that's what most of us live with, and we think it's normal until you have an experience of fluid. So in Alexander, your, your job is, under the guidance of a teacher, to have more fluid more flow, more fluid, uh, easier, lighter, more efficient, less demand on the neck and shoulders and back in everyday activities, mm -hmm. computing, sitting, standing, driving, doing stuff at home, sports, music, doesn't matter. And staying with that condition, of course, as you go onto your toes, and in that condition as you come down to the heels. And it's not about staying like this in the same position because that wouldn't be fluid anymore. Yeah. That would be breaking the fluid. Yeah. That would be interfering with flow. I, uh, I train in musical theatre, so going on my toes makes me think of ballet. Yeah, so I work with ballet dancers because sometimes ballet dancers put a bit too much ballet into things, you know? Yeah, well, I feel myself when we first did it, I would sort of, yeah, and you'd feel my body sort Exactly, there you it. go, this one. So, <laughs> so that's not my job to make you go like this. No, yeah because that would be putting non-fluid into the story. Well, if, if anything, that's what I feel. I feel like I go up to the top and then... And, and now, do you see what you did with your eyes as well? Do it again. Widen, yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. And everyone does that. It's yeah. a very normal thing. So my job isn't to get you into another pose, mm. a ballet pose, which puts more effort into it, but to allow you to be just Becca. Yeah. Without disturbing Becca as you go onto your toes and not to associate it with a... <laughs> uh, a ballet game. Yeah. So you're staying Becca as you go onto your toes, but undisturbed Becca down to your heels. The highest level of Alexander is 
to recover being undisturbed in everyday activities rather than staying disturbed and repeating disturbed all the time. Now, hips back and bend the knees. Yes, so you get to a chair and it doesn't have to be even thought about heels and then bend the knees again and then heels and then bend the knees again and then heels and then bend the knees again. We could repeat this over and over again. Heels and bend the knees. Yes. So right now, what's your experience of the spine? I'm not feeling like nothing. Nothing. As right. In, as in nothing. Yeah. 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 So I get that. And nothing is probably the most important word in my understanding of Alexander. That nothing, when you say nothing, it helps me understand that you have the right experience. Mm -hmm. Because it's nothing compared to, it's a good thing. Nothing is a good thing. Nothing compared to the something that we're very familiar with. The, the something of the jamming of the head into the spine and the something of the shoulders compressing and the aches and pains that we create through all the compression. That's a something. And when you have the absence of the something, you have your nothing. You have your nothing. <laughs> so my job is to give you all that nothing. Bend the knees. Repeatedly. All that nothing. Stand it with the heels. And to help you have the nothing in everyday life. Doesn't mean nothing happens. That's another game. But to, to have the emptiness of nothing in the middle of the most demanding of activities. What's the most demanding activities? Do you dance? Do you? Or... Uh, I also audition, and that's probably the most stressful. Right. So when everyone's watching you, and you have to perform. Yeah. And what's when you're not at your best? What would happen in front of an audition of examiners mm -hmm. when you have to perform and you're not doing so well with yourself? What would happen that would be a sign that you're not coping too well? Uh, I stop breathing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You'd freeze, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd have a bit of stage fright, that sort of thing. So that would be a something. Mm -hmm. Ideally, what you'd like is to walk into an audition. And it'd be like I was going to Sainsbury's. Correct. Yeah. Waitrose. Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> there are no way to <laughs> And now, hips back and bend the knees. And stop. That's it. And then heels. And bend the knees. So I think you've described it really well. If you could walk into an audition with the nothing, then it would be a much higher level of an audition than when all, with all the some things that you do when you hold your breath and you freeze a little bit it wouldn't allow such high-level performance, would it? It would interfere. Yeah. So we're very much in the business of preventing interference with natural performance. Mm -hmm. Not learning another thing called Alexander performance, which yeah. would be a bit daft, wouldn't it? Yeah, As in, sense. got to be an Alexander person. <laughs> that would be another something. Yeah. So real Alexander is literally nothing. Mm -hmm. It isn't another something called Alexander walking or Alexander sitting or an Alexander shape of my back and Alexander place of my shoulders. Mm. It's literally nothing compared to the something that most of us bring to an Alexander class. And now, nothing as you go onto your toes. Mm. And nothing down to the heels. And then nothing as your hips come back, as your knees, that's good. And then all the way to the stool, and still nothing, even if your head is there, or there, and there too. And still nothing as I take you backwards, Still nothing as I take you forwards and stop. And stay gently against me to stop you doing something called jumping out of your skin. Stay back and then heels. That's it. Bend your knees over your toes. And stop. Heels. And bend the knees. And stop. Heels. Very good. Bend the knees over your toes and heels, and then bend the knees again. How are you doing with this? Are your legs coping? Yes. Heel. Bend the knees, and heels. And this isn't leg exercise, even though it might feel like it. It's brain exercise, even though you're working your legs rather hard. Bend the knees. And it's the brain exercise of learning to do nothing compared to the something that would normally happen, and then heels, and bend the knees. 
and stop there for a while. And heels. And then bend the knees over the toes from there. Yes. And I'll take you here and here and stop. I'll take an arm. What's happening in your brain as you're doing all these demanding sittings and standings? Mm, I feel quite centered. Quite centered, yeah. What does it, when you say the word centered, what does it mean to you? Sort of in the eye of a storm. In the eye of the storm, rather than actually being, yeah, being the storm. In it, yeah. Right in the center of the cyclone. There was a wonderful book written in the 60s called Center of the Cyclone, oh. written by, I think he's called John Lilly. It was about how to remain centered, right in the center, while all the world around you is going absolutely crazy, and you're absolutely still, right in the center of the tornado. And it's very much a description of the experience you're, yeah. you're talking about. And then stop. And then wait, I'll take you there. So to remain centered, while maybe every, everyone around you is going bonkers. Stay with my hands and gently stand up with the heels. And then bend the knees from there. And heels. And bend the knees. And then heels. And then bend the knees. And heels. Yeah, and then walk to the window and then just come back again quite quickly. Yes, that's good. And then back again. Yeah, excellent. And then feet wide-ish. Bend the knees. What's it like feeling centered in the center of the... It feels I'm not putting pressure on myself to do something right. Yeah, that's it. And so the pressure to do something right, to succeed and do it well, is a mental and a physical pressure. Mm. Mm. And when you don't do that, it feels rather nice, doesn't it? The absence of that familiar way of yeah. treating ourselves, which is quite punishing. Got to get it right. And that translates into quite a lot of physical tension as well. And right now, you're, ex you're, you're experiencing yourself without having to get something right, mm -hmm. which means all that drops mm -hmm. and you experience being in the center without getting caught up in all the frazzle and all the hype. Mm. So you can automatically experience that this Alexander process is a mind-body process. It's not just about your mental system or your postural patterns, but something includes mind and body, that this center of the cyclone business is a mental capacity, a mental experience, and as well as a, a body experience of freedom and flow, being fluid. Mm -hmm. And stay there for a while, and then stand up with the heels again. Yes, and then bend the knees. And then heels, and bend the knees. So you can see the, the symmetry of the fluid experience of the body and the centeredness of the mind. Do you get that relationship? Yeah. And that is a relationship. It's very real. And obviously the opposite is real. When the brain is really disturbed, like in an audition, mm -hmm. and frazzled with getting it right, as you very nicely put it, the body will have a corresponding reality of bracing and holding of the breath. And the two things go together. You're either trying to get it right and freezing, and the brain goes into a disturbed pattern and the body reflects that in terms of holding of the breath and the bracing of the neck and shoulders and back, or the mind is centered and the body is fluid. And that's a, a kinder way to look after yourself if you, mm -hmm. if you get the meaning. And then hips back and bend the knees. Yep, all the way to the stool and then stop. And then heels. Yes, and then bend the knees and stop. And heels. And bend the knees and stop there. And heels. Good, and then walk with me for a little while. Mm hmm, that's fine. 
Yeah, and then quite quickly to the mirror and then back again to the stool. Yeah, that's fine. Good. What's walking feeling like? <laughs> Nothing good. <laughs> that's a good word. Right, what we'll do is we'll have you on the table for a while now um, with your shoes off and just put them underneath there. We'll, we'll have some table work. So you lie yourself on your back, you're going to, yes, head's going to be this end, and get yourself right into the center, and that's perfect, and I'm going to support your head on these books, yes. So while you're lying there having an easy time, have any questions come up about what we're doing, your experiences, or your role no, as a... You're not thinking about much. That's a nice way to be. Yeah. Is that unusual? Not thinking about much. It's a conscious effort sometimes. Yes, but now is it a conscious effort? No. no. Conscious effort to think about, some, about nothing isn't as valuable. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose. It defeats the purpose, yes. Yes, it's like trying to relax. Trying wins and relaxing tends to lose. What you want as an experience is for it just to happen rather than for you to worry about having to manufacture mm -hmm. nothing. Got to try to do nothing. That's not going to work. It's just going to busy you up even more. Yeah. Distract. Yeah. So I'm moving you around, a bit like moving you on the chair, but different parts of you. Right now I'm moving mainly your head, your legs and your arms. And as we were doing before, you're requested, as far as possible, to let me do the moving, like I was moving your head when we were doing chair work, for you to let me move you. And now I'm moving an arm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take another arm and you just lie there doing absolutely nothing. And what's happening when you do nothing when you're lying down? Something very interesting. There's, what, what would you say is working on you as you're lying down? You have gravity, yes. Very important idea. You can't help it. Gravity is working on you. So at the moment you're giving yourself well, gravity is giving you a lesson. And where does gravity take you? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Yes. Takes you closer to the center of the earth. It takes you down. So you might start off holding yourself against gravity. Most of us would. And what, what would happen after a while of lying with gravity? I think you'd become more aware of it. You would. You'd be much more aware of the influence of gravity and where it takes you. You'd feel the, the impact. And after a while, what would you feel, do you think? And um, by the way, I'm just working with gravity. I'm not changing the shape of your body at all. Ah, there you go. That's gravity. Could you feel that little? Yeah, but I, I do this. We did a similar technique at drama school. Not elements of it. Sometimes yes. They would, I would always, my shoulders, I knew they were tense, but it's almost like I couldn't figure out how to relax them. Yes. And the more and you tried... Them, was an effort. That's right. That's exactly it. The more you try to relax them with effort, mm. you wouldn't get the no. desired result. So what's your attitude towards your shoulders or anywhere else right now, just lying here? Uh, they're probably more relaxed than I've felt in a very long time. Yeah. 
because they're normally not on the map. No, so they've dropped. They're more relaxed than for a very long time. And are you trying to make them relaxed? No. Do you see the connection? Mm. And I would say they're relaxed more than they have been for a long, long time because you're not trying to make them relax. Yeah. But that's the problem. It's not the solution. Mm. If I can get you and help you into this state of mind when you are not trying, what would you call this state of mind that you're in right now? Relaxed. Yeah. The absence of trying. Mm -hmm. That's the mind of letting something happen. Right now you're letting gravity happen. And you're right, most of the time we interfere with letting gravity happen by trying. You're trying to relax your shoulders. Well, that doesn't really let gravity do anything. But now you're not making any effort at all to make gravity work. You've given up on all of that trying from here. Mm -hmm. You call it relaxation. It's a pretty good word, relaxation. You're, you're surrendering to the experience of gravity mm -hmm. rather than trying to make it happen or make it happen more. And then your shoulders go exactly where they're designed to go. Yeah. If you think you know where they ought to go and you start mucking around around here, then yeah. you get tight shoulders. It's the same in the hips, it's the same in the ankles, it's the same in the jaw, same in the forehead, elbows, wrists, fingers, feet, ankles, toes, it's the same everywhere. It's like the whole body is being informed by an attitude of mind. I sometimes when I'm in this position find it hard to hold my knees with it, it feels like effort, this is like a little bit, I almost want to relax them inward and yes. lean them against each other. Yes, what, when you're on your own? Yeah. Mm. And how is it, how easy is it at the moment? I feel like there's a, a sweet spot where it's not hard. Yes. And either side of that, it's a little bit. That's right, so the, what I'm doing with you is getting you into that sweet spot, hopefully through making sure that they're not overly falling out or in so that it's the least effort possible to hold your knees up. So and that for you is round about there. Yeah, it doesn't matter exactly, but as long as they're not falling too much out, too, too much in, somewhere in the middle, where there's not a big muscular effort to keep them from falling. Some people have very tight inner thighs, in which case I'd probably let them fall in a little bit. What you don't want is to have somebody lying down, making a big effort, not to, not to keep the, uh, the knees up. That's it. Let me, that's fine. I've got all the weight of your leg. Is that reasonably easy in your, in your legs? Yeah. What just happened then to your back? I feel more upright. Yeah, yeah. Much more extended. Mm -hmm. it, that, yes, yeah. so the back suddenly went, mm. Mm -hmm. it gave up a bit more into gravity. Yeah. Why? Because you weren't fighting it. And when I lifted you, and you weren't fighting, you were still surrendering yourself to gravity, the back responded and said, yes, there's more space. There's more uprightness and there's more expansion. That's exactly what happened. So you get a sense that the back is more connected to the table. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Round about here, maybe?
And if you are doing this lying down work on your own, and it's a nice thing to do, do it in an Alexander way, which means you have books under your head, the right amount to stop your neck getting overly squashed, and your knees straight up and your feet about hip width apart, and your hands either like that on your tummy or here on the table, it doesn't matter, on the floor. And the amount of books is roughly the way it is right now. So that your head isn't relaxing onto the yeah. floor like this, which is a strain, it's not a good way to rest, or overly propped up on too many books where you're squashing in the front. So your neck should be approximately parallel to the ground. And after a while of lying there, you'll find the amount of books might change. So compared to when you first got on the table, that's absolutely enough for you, and I've taken the book away. Yeah. What do you sense about your shoulders at the moment? I don't like thinking about them because I feel like if I think about them, then they activate. Yes. So I, when we talk about them being tense, I feel them go right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so it's hard just to... If, it, it, it's almost like they do it when I'm not looking at them. Yes, yes. You mean they let go when you're not looking yeah. at them. Yes, and if you're overly interested in yeah. them, you'd start to tighten them up again. Yeah. So I shouldn't ask you too many questions <laughs> about them, that's for sure. But I will ask you just a little question for the purpose of demonstration. Mm. You don't normally experience your shoulders this relaxed now. This relaxed. I have a very strong memory of the first time I did something like this with my teacher at school. Mm. And she came and she kind of pushed down my shoulders from the top. And I remember relaxing them because I thought, oh, I'll do the right thing. This is relaxing. But it was, like we said, it's an effort. Yes. And then as soon as she left, I let the relaxing go. It sprung up. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is a different sort of thing. There's yeah. no spring involved because you're in a very lovely condition of letting go, of surrender to gravity. And therefore, even if you're aware of your shoulders right now, I can assure you it won't be that experience again. Yeah. They won't suddenly start springing up. But, but you're absolutely right. When you're lying down, you don't have to be overly concerned with any part of the body letting go. It'll all happen. Mm -hmm. And the more you try to let bits and pieces work in a particular way, you'll probably be adding to the tension story. And right now you don't need to do anything at all. So it's coming to the end of the session. Are there any questions that are, are arising that you want to share? Just with the shoulder thing. Yeah. Like you said, if I'm not, I think what's really working is the fact that you're doing it. Yes. And I don't have to worry about it. Correct. Because if I have to worry about it, we get into the whole well, trying versus not trying. Correct. Any hard so, and fast? Yeah. yeah. So my advice to that is what you're experiencing is you're not trying because you've given me the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Good. So you realize that when you're trying to get something going, it doesn't work. You yeah. get the opposite result, which is more stuff going on than you had before. So the first thing you take away from that is that your trying doesn't do anything. Yeah. It only makes a mess. Yeah. When I'm here, you think I'm the one that's responsible, so you give up. Mm -hmm. My job is to teach you to have the same give up quality of you can't do anything about it anyway when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And you can say, nature's there. Gravity's there. Nothing's there. And you have an attitude of letting go and surrender and the absence of the trying something. But nothing. So you lie there and you have an experience that actually when I don't try, I let go. When I don't try to fix myself, it opens up. So there's a bit of a paradox. The, the teacher's role is to get you into that condition of biological faith, of organic, organic faith, where you get out of your own way because you 
realize that doing is not the solution and non-doing is the answer. So whether I'm here or not here, I will always, always say to you, there's nothing you need to do in your neck, back, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles. Do you get that? Try less, yes. And you'll have certain magic moments where you have an absence of trying and then really things start to work. And the purpose of lessons, the whole purpose of Alexander lessons is to develop and cultivate in you this capacity of non-trying and letting on your own so that you recover quickly and you get into a pickle less frequently. So that's my best suggestion. But it takes time to cultivate this attitude because most of us have a very trying brain and fix-it brain and push-the-shoulders-down brain and get rid of tension attitudes of doing and pushing. And when you let those go, when you truly let those go, then the real Alexander magic happens, the organic magic of things extending of flowing, of easing. Okay, so now I'm going to get you out of the lying position. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have your knees there for a while. This foot I'm going to have slightly over the table. What's going to happen now is you're, under my guidance, roll over this way and you'll be sitting on the side of the table. This knee will come round, and you'll come over all of a piece. Your, shoulder, your head, shoulder, hip, knee and ankle will all, will all move at the same time onto the left, so roll and roll, that's it, and the hip, and the, and the leg, and then I get you up from there, mm -hmm. and then wait there for a while. Yes, and then you can help yourself off the table with your hands. And then walk with me a little bit, just over to the mirror and back again. Yes, and then come back to the, your stool. Yep, and then you can just get yourself into the chair. Yep. That's it, bend your knees. Mm -hmm. Fine. Good, and you just, yes, that's it. So I'm going to leave you there. That's the end of your, your lesson. Any, any big questions popping in? Um, I was wondering, the semi supine with the knees, hmm. if I were to let my knees fall outward, is that not useful? Because that can be relaxing to me. So it can, yes, falling out or falling in, if they do happen to fall out. Or you might find a sweet spot by yourself where you can leave them pretty upright where they're not either falling out too much and in with a minimum of tension. Yeah. When they fall out, it might put more strain on the back. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you'd want them to be propped up somewhere in the middle. But if it's not possible, then it's not, then it's not possible. The most important thing is not to fight it, because yeah. then all of you is going to get involved in the struggle of the knees not falling in or out. So that wouldn't be very useful. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, ideally somewhere in the middle. If not, if they fall in, the fall out a little bit, it's no, it's not the end of the world. Okay? Good. Thank you very, very much for coming in. Thank you.